In the last lecture, we learned about passing and handling query strings from a URL. Now, this lecture is the continuation of my previous lecture. So, if you have not watched that lecture, then I will highly recommend you to go through that lecture first before proceeding with this lecture. In the last lecture, we modified this products route and there, first we are checking if in the URL we have this ID query string. If we do not have this ID query string in the URL, in that case, we are sending this response. So here in this case, we are basically sending the HTML response which we have inside this product list HTML. But if in the URL we have this ID query string, in that case, we are sending this text response. Now, instead of sending the text response here, here I want to send some HTML response. For that, inside this template folder, I will create a new file and I will call this file productdetails.html. And inside this file, I'm going to write some HTML. And in order to save some time, I have already written that HTML. So I will copy it from here and I will paste it inside this productdetails.html file. Now again, in this HTML file, I'm using some hard-coded values, but I want to replace these hard-coded values with the property value of that product which we want to display in the web page using this HTML. So in the app.js, we are already writing a logic to replace the placeholders in this product list HTML file with the property value of that product. So here what we want is we want to reuse this logic for this product details HTML as well. And in order to do that, here I'm going to create a function. I will call this function maybe replace HTML. And for this function, I'm going to take two parameters. First, I'm going to take the template parameter. So to this template parameter, we are going to assign an HTML file. And then I also want to take the product parameter. Now what I will do is I will copy this code from here and I will put it inside this replace HTML function. And there I'm going to replace this product list HTML with the value which we'll receive inside this template parameter. Okay, and I'm going to replace this prod with this product parameter. Okay, and we can go ahead and we can remove this logic from here. Now, since we have moved this logic inside a function, we also need to go to this products route and there we need to modify our logic because now we don't have this product HTML array anymore. So here what I'm going to do is here we have this products array. On this products array, I'm going to call the map function. So here on this product array, I'm going to call this map function. To this map function, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function is going to receive the current element from this product array for each iteration. So let's simply call it as prod. And from within this callback function, let's go ahead and let's call the replace HTML function. And there, for the template, we want to pass product list HTML. So I'll copy it from here. And let's pass it here. And for the products parameter, we are going to pass this prod. And once the map function is done iterating over this products array, it is going to return us a new array. Let's call that array product HTML array. And then here we are using that product HTML array. And we are joining the elements of that array using this join method. So here the rest of the logic is same. So if I save the changes here, if I stop the server and if I restart the server, let's go to the web page and let's go to the products page. So here you will see it is not displaying us the products. That's because from within this map function, we also need to return the value which we are not returning currently. With this, let's save the changes. Let's stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and let's restart the server. Now let's go to the web page and let's reload the page. So now it should display all the products as expected. Now what we want is, just like we have used this replace HTML function to replace the placeholders in the product list HTML file, in the same way, we want to use this replace HTML function to replace the placeholders in the product details HTML file. So if I scroll up from within this replace HTML, we are going to replace these placeholders in the template HTML file. So in the product details.html, 
we need to have the same placeholder's name. Then only this replace HTML will able to replace that placeholder with the product's property value. So I will copy this image placeholder from here. And here in the product details HTML, I want to display the image at this place. So to this source attribute, I'm going to assign this placeholder. In the same way, here I want to display the name of the product. So there I will use this name placeholder and I will replace it here. Let's do the same thing for other properties. So here I want to display the price. Here I want to display the size. Here I want to display the camera. Here I want to display the model number. Here I want to display the model name. And here I want to display the ROM size. Now, if I go to app.js, you will notice that we don't have any placeholder for replacing the ROM. So what I will do is I will copy this line of code. I will paste it here. And let's say here I want to replace the ROM. And I want to replace this ROM placeholder with the value of this ROM property. So I'll copy this property name and I will specify it here. And now let me go ahead and let me copy this placeholder and let's specify it here in the same way we also want to have a placeholder for description for the product description so here i'm going to specify a placeholder and let's simply call it desc now let me go back to app.js let me copy this from here this line let's paste it again and there let's replace this placeholder with the placeholder for description and here we want to replace this placeholder with the value of this description property so let's use it here okay so when we will pass this product details.html as the template for this replace html there these placeholders if they are present in that html file they will be replaced with the property value of that particular product now let's go ahead and let's read this product details.html and let's store it in a variable so here I will copy this line and here let's call the variable as product detail HTML and here instead of product list HTML we want to read product details dot HTML okay now let's go ahead and let's call this replace HTML at this line so here where we are sending the response before that let me call this replace HTML and to that for the template, let's pass this product details HTML variable. And for the product, here we have this query object. And this query object is going to have an ID property if the user has specified the ID query string in the URL. Right. So what we can do is here we can say products. So this products is an array which is storing all our products from our JSON data. And to that, we are going to pass query.id. So this expression here is going to return us product based on the value of this ID property. Let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and let's simply call it maybe prod. And let's pass this prod as the second argument to this replace HTML. Now this replace HTML is going to return us some HTML content. Let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable let's call it product detail response HTML now what we want is in the index.html we want to replace this content with the HTML which we are storing inside this product detail response HTML variable so here actually let's remove this s3 here in the index.html let's save the changes here and in the app.js what I will do is I will copy this line because in the HTML variable we are storing the HTML content of index.html. So from that HTML we want to replace this content. So let me copy this line and let me pass it to this response.end. We don't need to use this join method here. So let's remove it. Here I want to replace this content with the HTML content which we have inside this variable. Okay, so if I save the changes, let's stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and let's also restart the server. Let's go to the web page. And now 
when I click on the show details button, you will notice that in the URL, a query string has been added. And based on that query string, it is showing the product details. If I click on this back button, it will take us to the products page. And if I go ahead and if I click on the show detail of any other product, let's say Apple iPhone XR, it will take us to that product details. Again, if I click on this back button, it will take us to the products page. And if I click on maybe the last product here, it will show us the details of that product. So based on the value of this query string, that means based on the value which is assigned to this ID property, we are displaying the details of that particular product with that ID. All right. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.